Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a new Cinema 4D video about how to set up and use object buffers in Cinema 4D in order to create mass and track maths that you can then use in post-production apps like Photoshop and After Effects. This episode is brought to you by Artbeats Express. Create a free account at artbeatsexpress.media by subscription and receive complimentary broadcast quality resolution content files. No credit card payments or obligations are required. Click the link for more details. So if you aren't familiar with object buffers and are wondering what the hell I'm talking about, let me explain real quick. Object buffers can be assigned to 3D objects using the compositing tag in order to render out a separate pass where the entire object is white like we see here and everything else is black. What's the point of that? Well, if you want to adjust anything later in post-production, this saves you the time of needing to re-render the entire shot again and allows you to manipulate objects individually when it comes to color correction, effects, and other needs. For a still render, you can use this as a way to quickly select objects without needing to use a path and apply adjustments to that selection individually. For animations, you can use the rendered sequence as a track mat to do the same thing. This is huge when it comes to animation, as the time to re-render an entire animation could be pretty lengthy. It's pretty clear in this example where we have 3D text and we want to adjust only one word over time. But to point out an even more extreme example, here's another shot where I used object buffers to do something similar. I rendered out this whole shot, which took quite a while because there's a lot of reflections and glass and refraction going on. And after that, I needed to add some adjustments to just this car door right here. Well, rather than re-render the entire thing or try to draw masks on every frame, I rendered out a track mat using this object buffer setting of just the door. So then I can make adjustments on what's on that door and the color correction really easily over time. So Let's talk about setting this up in Cinema 4D and then what you can do with it once you're done, either in Photoshop for still renders or After Effects for animations. So here we have our 3D text and we want to have control over the object separately without having to draw mass and without having to re-render everything every time we make an adjustment. So we got some camera animation, so everything is going to be moving over time, every single frame. Well, rather than re-render everything or try to manually draw a mask to roto those words in After Effects, we can assign an object buffer and then render that out. So what we want to do to get that set up is grab any object. So I'll grab this word object, which makes for a fun sentence. And then I'm going to right click and go to Cinema 4D Tags Compositing. And you can do a lot with the compositing tag. It's really awesome. I have some other tutorials that go over some other uses. But for this workflow, what we want to do is go to object buffer and we want to enable one of these. So we'll check on enable buffer one. And now to get it to render out that pass, what we want to do is go to our render settings and we're going to go to output for an animation. We want to make sure we have all frames. We want to save it in some way. So what I like to do for 3d animations is save it as a image sequence. You could do that as either a PNG sequence, TIFF, Targa, OpenEXR. I like using PNG at 16 bits per channel. Now that's going to render out just our main animation. And when we bring that into After Effects, it would be just this part. To get that object buffer rendered out, we need to do one more step. We're going to check on multi-pass and you can see in the save window, it's going to add an additional multi-pass image. And what I want to do is right click on multi-pass and add an object buffer, which is right here. And it's going to ask me what group I want. And we want to make sure that matches to whatever one we checked here. Now, the reason we could do this is because we can add up to 12 of these. So we could render out the second word separately, the floor, individual letters, anything you want to do. And you just keep adding more object buffers and then assigning the groups. Now, to make sure that this saves, what we want to do is go to save and we want to check on multi-pass and we're going to set it at the same setting. So for our regular image, I have it saving out into this folder. So here's the one I already rented out for this example. And then for my multi-pass image, I usually like to make a separate folder within the main render. So I have this text mat a, and I'm just going to name that text mat a object one save. And then I can press shift R to start rendering to the picture viewer. And it's going to start rendering every frame of that. And if we go to layer, we can see what it's going to do is render out our main image. And then if we, click on single pass, we can see what that object buffer is going to look like. And it's rendering out a separate render 
in black and white of just that object over time. So this is really useful because we don't have to manually rotoscope stuff and draw mass. If we're doing stuff later, we can really control things separately. So let's talk quickly about how to use these later on. First, let's talk about if we're just doing a still render, we could go find one of our frames. So let's say object buffer 13 and I'll open that up in Photoshop. And same idea, if we were just doing this manually or if we didn't have this, we'd have to grab our wand or our pen tool and really try to isolate this separately. Well, what we can do with that multi-pass object buffer is I'm gonna go into that text mat A folder I made, grab that same corresponding frame. So I'll get frame 13, open that up. And then I can select all with command A, copy, edit, copy, or command C, and then paste. And then I can go to channels and I'll just command or control click on RGB. And it's going to automatically make a selection on just the white areas. And then I could use that highlighted selection to make a new layer, maybe fill it if I did alt delete or make an adjustment layer down here. Say I did something like hue saturation. It's going to create that adjustment layer and attach a mask of that selection. So if I change the color saturation, you can see it's restricted only to this. And that's really useful for being able to individually control different 3D objects in post-production. Now let's say we're doing an animation and that's where it's really useful. Here I have it correctly set up using a track mat. So we have one copy of the render, which is just our original render, a duplicate of it with an effect. So I'm doing that same hue saturation just for the sake of showing something and to knock that out so we end up seeing only this on that layer, what we have is that animation of the multi-pass as a track man, you can see there's our black and white image. So let's talk about setting this up. I'll just delete everything and bring this back in. What I wanna do first is import the main PNG sequence and I can do that by double clicking and I'll grab any of these frames, make sure PNG sequence is checked on and I'll go to open. And then I can just drag that into my new composition button and I'll call this original render. Now I wanna next import that track mat I made with my object buffer. So I'm gonna grab any of these frames from this folder of renders, same thing, make sure PNG sequence is checked on, click open. And what I can do is bring this on top of my footage and I'll call this track mat. You can call it whatever you want. And then to get this to work, what I'm going to do is grab this original render and change it from track mat none to luma mat. And if you don't have these buttons, you can right click columns, modes, make sure that's checked on. And then after I set it to luma mat, you can see it's going to use that as a mask over time, which is what a track mat is to isolate whatever is white pixels. So if I did luma invert, it's going to do the opposite and we would see a hole cut in it. it looks pretty cool but not what we're trying to do and since this track mat is 100 percent black pixels or 100 percent white pixels it's going to completely accurately make that mask so now on this footage we could get effects we could get something like hue saturation if we want to show an extreme example and same idea it'll restrict it only to this now we need the rest of it back so all we need to do is duplicate this footage with command d and i'll pull it to the bottom make sure there's no track mat and just delete our effect. And then I could just rename this middle one adjusted layer. So then I have my original footage with no track mat. So that's just our main render, our adjusted layer sitting on top of that. And then our track mat, which will automatically be shut off. And it's using that just as a reference to isolate that image. So using track mats, from Cinema 40 and sending it to Photoshop or After Effects is an incredibly useful and powerful tool. It's something that's really good to know how to do so you don't find yourself in a bind and have to re-render an entire shot just for one little thing. And if you want to check out more Cinema 40 and After Effects tutorials, be sure to check out the full website at motiontutorials.net where I have tons of Cinema 40 After Effects and Cinema 40 light tutorials as well as other stuff. And if you want to check out some cool Cinema 4D and After Effects projects, check out the online store where I have some new products like 360 Environment Maps Pro for Cinema 4D and After Effects where you can really get control of your lighting and reflections and create some really awesome looking 3D renders 
by utilizing these environment maps shot all over the place in different locations like Las Vegas, Chicago, interiors of buildings, outside areas, and you can massively change and improve the way your renders will look. It's also Cinema 4D Lite compatible, and if you're an Element 3D user, there's also an After Effects Element 3D version, so be sure to check those out in the online store. There's some really fun products, they're really affordable, and it's some really great stuff you can do with it. And if you have any questions on this tutorial or any of my tutorials, you can hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Sean Frangella, and check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. I love hearing from people about the tutorials and answering any questions. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you wanna keep learning, more about Cinema 40 and After Effects, be sure to check out some of my other tutorials right on YouTube by clicking on any of those buttons that are popping up there where you can keep learning. Thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.